we have a theorem that tells us how to find the Jordan canonical form, the GCF of A, and the matrix P such as A equals P times GCF times P inverse. Let us try to find these matrices GCF and P now in an explicit example to see how this works in practice. So here we have the matrix A. Uh, I've already given that the eigenvalue of A is lambda equals 1 and that it has algebraic multiplicity 3. So I skipped that part of all the computations. Um, now, let's, let's get started. Step A, uh, see, whether, uh, see whether we can find the geometric multiplicity first. We compute A minus lambda I, so that means that you uh, subtract 1 from the diagonal, so you get a minus 1, a minus 1, and a 2. Uh, we row reduce by uh, adding the plus 1 first row to the last one, and we see that we have uh, two uh, pivots, so one free variable, so the geometric multiplicity of this eigenvalue is uh, 1, and the lambda is the span of V, where V equals 1, 1, 1. So there we are. So we already see that we are going to get uh, one cycle of length 3, which ends at V1, uh, V equals 1, 1, 1. So what's left to do is to compute the other two generalized eigenvectors. So first, uh, we set uh, V1, so the final vector we set V1 equals to V, 1, 1, 1. And then we set, solve a minus lambda i times x equals v1 in order to find v2. So we, uh, uh, we, we form our augmented matrix. Here we have our a minus lambda i. And here we have our v. Do the same a row reduction step. Like uh, add first row to the last one. And then we get uh, uh, 0. 1 minus 3 equals minus 2, 0 plus 2 equals 2, and 1 plus 1 equals 2. Uh, let's see how do we continue. We uh, subtract the second row twice from the third, which gives us a row of zeros over here. And then, well, let, uh, let us add this one over here. Let's go all the way to um, reduced echelon form which gives us a 0 over here, and 1 plus 0 equals 1, and 1 plus 1 equals 2. So, uh, there we go. And then we solve, we see t3 is a free variable. A second row gives me 0 times c1 minus 1 times c2 plus 1 times c3 equals 1. So, we can uh, express c2 and c3. c2 equals minus 1 plus c3. And then the First row gives us minus c1 plus 0 times c2 plus c3 equals 2. So we can solve for c1. c1 equals minus 2 plus c3. And we write down the parametric factor form. x equals, equals c3 times, well, the eigenvector as expected, plus some particular solution, minus 2 minus 1, 0. And then we know my second generalized eigenvector but as we can take the particular solution, P2 equals minus 2 minus 1, 0. So there we have our a second generalized eigenvector. Going on to the third one. We do exactly the same, solve A minus lambda I times X, but now instead of V1, we put V2. So the only thing which is going to change is that our right hand side here becomes slightly different. So we can do the same uh, row reduction steps. Uh, so this part will remain the same, and only the right-hand side is changing a bit. Uh, well, uh, let, let's skip to the result straight away, because it's a standard row reduction. So instead of this 2, 1, 0, you get here a minus 3, minus 1, 0. And then we can solve, uh, of course, C3, 3, C2 equals now 1 plus C3, and C1 equals 3 plus C3. So Writing down the solution, I copied it here, right on the parametric factor form. So we get C3 times 1, 1, 1, plus a particular solution. And then you know, as our third generalized eigenvector, we can pick our particular solution. So there we have our V3. And then we can form our P, consisting of V1, V2, 
and v3, we can write down immediately that the GCF is the eigenvalues on the diagonal. There's only one block and one symbol of it. So there you have your GCF. And of course, it's always used to check that indeed you did make any errors. Uh, you need to check whether a equals p, GCF, p inverse. Or usually it's a bit easier to check whether indeed we have a times p equals p times gcf. I'll leave to, yeah, I will leave that check up to you to verify that we didn't make any mistakes. So this is how you can find the gcf of a matrix A and the matrix P, uh, such as a equals p times gcf times p inverse.